I would like to invite uh, Mrs. Madeleine Wittekent from Germany. So good morning, everyone. Um, with my background in um, high altitude and medium altitude remotely piloted aircraft systems, I'm considering it an honor being called for participating in this year's UVIT conference here in Israel and also uh, delivering a lecture on our European uh, medium altitude mail program we are delivering in Europe at the moment. So I also interpret this as a strong signal um, on the good uh, cooperation uh, between our two countries, Israel and Germany. So thanks a lot for having us here, having me here. And that said, I want to uh, speak about the European Mail Air Pass project and the European UAV future in the uh, next couple of slides and give you an introduction about what our intention is to do, what are we doing at the moment, and yeah. Ah, now <laughs> I got it, how to, how to work the system. So first of all, what uh, am I want to speak with you about? Uh, first of all, I want to start with a general introduction on our uh, program, afterwards followed by an overview about our program organization. I want to deliver a general overview about our intention, our plans, what are we doing? and provide some information about the technical data of our system as well. And last but not least, I will give you at least some key points about our major achievements uh, we reached for our program so far. So first of all, within this uh, introduction slide, I want to demarcate our system from uh, other platforms already available or planned for the uh, near future. Uh, you see uh, the high altitude long endurance system, the hail systems on the top of the slides. Uh, they are originally uh, doing their work at around flight level 600. That means around 60,000 feet uh, or in other words, 18.5 kilometers mean sea level. They are operated, but our system, or our future system, is classified as medium altitude long endurance system, that male system. I, no, no, tone is back. Our system is operating between 10,000 feet and 45,000 feet. Long endurance stands for that we are able to operate around and above 24 hours when we are on station. And um, the area where we are operating between 10,000 feet and 45,000 feet means we are sharing these flight levels with the uh, regular manned aircrafts and this means that we have to take care of special procedures, special capabilities because we are sharing these kind of uh, airspace with all the other aircrafts flying around. Um, that means especially that we uh, have to establish a detect and avoid system within our program, but I will come to the detect and avoid issue a little bit later within my presentation. This slide is just to, uh, this slide's intention is just to uh, give you an impression about the order of magnitude of our system. So with uh, our European Mail Air Pass has a planned wingspan of around 27 meters, a length of about 70 meters, and the maximum take of weight will be something around 11 tons. Therefore, we are ranged more nearby a small hail system than a, a mail system. And I am always impressed um, by the size of these kind of aircrafts. Um, a normal hail system, like for example the Triton you see on the right hand side of the uh, slide, has a larger wingspan than a normal aircraft, uh, Boeing 737-300 type. So these sizes are always impressing me. And they are, these kind of aircrafts are using glider characteristics and our system with uh, also a large wingspan will use these kind of characteristics during the flight as well. 
I want to give you an introduction about our program itself. We have uh, four participating nations with our program. Germany is one of them, uh, in combination with Spain, France and Italy. Uh, we are doing this uh, program development. We have an industry consortium with us. Our future prime is Airbus Defence and Space uh, Germany in combination with Airbus Defence and Space uh, Spain, Dassault Aviation uh, from France and Leonardo from Italy. These uh, industry partners are working together within the uh, product development of our mail system. In between you see the OCAR, that's an international armament corporation we are working with and they are uh, taking care of uh, our European mail app pass within their own program division within the um, OCAR. Now I want to go a little bit into more detail what our system uh, is going to do later on. So what, is, what are our plans? We want to facilitate uh, conflict prevention and crisis management with a high degree of sovereignty. I will come back to the idea of sovereignty a little bit later. We also, our uh, intention as well is to provide persistent ISTAR. ISTAR stands for Intelligence, Surveillance, uh, Target Acquisition and Reconnaissance Capabilities with the opportunity for an immediate and precise weapon engagement worldwide. Um, next uh, issue is uh, offering the nation capabilities that go beyond what's currently available on the market. I especially want to mention the detect and avoid issue within this context because um, our, inter our intention is to ensure full freedom of action for uh, member states operating our system and to enable them to fly over European territory with a high level of safety and minimal operational limitations. We are aiming at a full integration into civilian airspace, that's what we are aiming at, in the um, a system of a single European sky that's not coming immediately. We are aiming at that goal of uh, integration into civil airspace in the 2025-2030 timeframe. However, this will be a stepped approach as well. Uh, what we are aiming at, this kind of full airspace integration. And I think that's a good idea and we will reach our goals in the end. Um, last uh, part on this slide is that we are also trying to take care for the for a large amount of commonality and cooperation in the usage phase of our system uh, in the end. Um, that's done by a so-called PESCO program, Persistent Structured Cooperation within Europe. And that could lead development of operational synergies in the area of logistics, training and upgrades. Therefore, we are trying to work together with other nations as much as possible to ensure we will have lots of commonalities to be dealt with uh, together. That's at least our intention. What are our main and major key design drivers for our system? We want to take care for ISTA, I already mentioned that. Uh, intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition and reconnaissance. We are taking care of armed ISTA as well and homeland operations with our system. We have some additional capabilities to be considered without a major design impact. For example, wide area surveillance, communications, naval force support, search and rescue operations. But I want to stay for a while at one special point, at least for my uh, point of view. These are the disaster relief operations we are taking care of in the future. Um, the intention for our system is also to have somehow a dual use context for dual use operations to use the system on the civil side and on the military side in a combined uh, environment. So um, what can you, th uh, what will you have over there when you think about disaster relief operations? You can for example think about a dike control during flood catastrophes or a railroad track control or for example as well searching uh, people within major catastrophic events. 
And these are only some examples what our intention is to do in the future with our system. And as you already uh, all mentioned, the discussions we are having at the moment all around the world about climate change, about weather change, about all these kind of stuff, um, I think we are supposed to go through these issues, through these kind of weather uh, catastrophes in the future a little bit more often, hopefully not, but at the moment the system is develop, uh, developing in this direction, therefore I think it's a good uh, idea, good feature to be capable of disaster relief operations for our system in the end as well. I want to show you some details, some technical data on our system. So I already mentioned the uh, dimensions of the system. We will have a, a length of around 17 meters, a, a wingspan of around 27 meters. Uh, we are dealing with the 11 ton class. We uh, try to reach or we will reach a speed of around 27, uh, 270 knots and we are able to stay on orbit around 26 hours in general. Um, we have a huge amount of payload we can uh, take with us. So it's more than two tons possible to be taken with us. Um, the, on the left hand side of the slide you see a mock-up of our system. That's the unveiling event on uh, April 2018 on ELA Airshow in Berlin. So that's the, the mock-up of our system. However, the system will look like the mock-up in the end. Therefore, I use this picture here. Due to safety considerations and due to our aim of um, full airspace integration, we finally decided within our program to use a twin engine turboprop configuration. Most of uh, remotely piloted aircraft systems are using a single engine, but we are uh, aiming on, the, on this twin engine uh, configuration to enable or to ease our uh, certification air traffic integration in the end uh, due to uh, safety issues. We will have a high degree of sovereignty within our program. That's especially in the European context of procurement and further development. Um, and we are able uh, to take care of a, a broad range of persistent I-STAR payload. So we are able to take lots of um, payload with us within our system. Um, I now want to say something about the major achievements so far. In September 2016, we had a, our definition study kickoff. Within our um, program, we decided to have a definition study in front of the development phase due to mitigate all the risks we, had, we have to deal with during the uh, system development. Therefore, we decided uh, to have a definition study beforehand. In uh, January 2018, we have had our system requirements review acceptance for the system. In April 18, there was the unveiling event of the uh, remotely piloted aircraft at the ELA Air Show in Berlin. Uh, Berlin, you already saw the, the picture before. And in uh, December 2018, we managed to finalize our system preliminary design review with our system. And this year in 2019, we already started or we are within the contract negotiation for our global contract. We are aiming at a global contract in general. That means uh, this contract will take care for the development phase, the production phase, and the initial in-service support phase. So all together in one contract, that's what global contract in our, for our system stands for. Thank you.